All right, lots to talk about. We'll uh, address it through the show with a varied program. Uh, Later on, uh, joining us as we continue our series every third Wednesday, the Blue Prairie Group today joining us will be Wealth Management uh, Advisor Carla Taylor. But we open up right now with a gentleman whose accomplishments are so numerous that I can't spend much time telling you about it. You can go to his website. It's chrisbertram.com, B-E-R-T-R-A-M. He's the author of several books. Uh, His expertise is in biology, engineering. He's also in who's who in the world. Uh, He's receiving certification at the clinical laboratory at UC Berkeley. He's worked in Silicon Valley in the U.S. Mint. He's already done more than I could ever hope to do. The name of his book, getting great acclaim, is Code of Prometheus. Code of Prometheus. It's published in paperback and ebook by Create Space. You can go to Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. And uh, get a copy uh, of the book. Welcome, Chris. Uh, A pleasure to have you on. Greetings from the West Coast. How are you doing? Yeah, listen, we're doing well. And I'd love to hear about what you're doing because you're talking about the the picture of human origins. And I know it's not directly related, but it's really interesting how uh, after traveling billions of miles over many, many years that we're now actually getting a look at Pluto and there's always the thought and the excitement of extraterrestrial life. You don't have to specifically talk about that. It's just that I think the timing is great. So tell us about your book uh, based upon your background and why you wrote it. So um, on weekends, I was in Silicon Valley. I was working with um, my boss. He has a Ph.D. in uh, physics from Stanford. And we would look at meteorites. Uh, at first, it was hard to get him to do it, and uh, I had some samples, and we looked at them, and we couldn't match the um, database with some of the meteorites. And so when he got interested, I really got interested. And so um, it started with meteorites, and then I found um, references in scientific journals that they were finding fossils in the meteorites going back to the 1800s. And no one talks about that. You you don't really find anyone that knows about those references or that line of research and everything. And I thought I would get into it. And the more you look into it, the more you get involved and really excited about it. And uh, and there's even more. There's amino acids found in space when you look through telescopes. So there's a lot of information out there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm at looking at what you've done and, and, and these discoveries and, and testing all these meteorites and, and amino acids. How come we're not getting more attention on this? This would seem to be a major, major story. I think so. Um, and there's a lot of references, clippings. I started keeping a file of clippings, and then my file got so big that I, I had to publish the book. and. I could now, when I talk to someone, I could say, well, here's the book, here's all the clippings, you could read it for yourself. And uh, and I'm not the only one who believes there's extraterrestrial life out there. Um, you could just run the statistics, and mathematically you could come up with uh, an idea that there's got to be extraterrestrial life out there. You could just look in the stars at night and just wonder that there must be life out there. There's got to be. Yeah, I'm I'm a believer, you know, I'm I'm always I'm a skeptic, but I am a believer because it just does not seem logical if indeed you want to apply logic to this. Uh you've got pictures of uh hypothetical alien species that we would encounter if we went somewhere else. What are you what are you basing the the looks on? Are you basing it on science or is this more fabrication and fictional? Well, I started uh, trying to piece together, like, what an alien insect would look like, um, the proteins that, and the polysaccharides that they're made of would be the first kind of life form that would arrive. And I was browsing through artist interpretations of um, aliens, and I came across the best pictures that I thought would match uh, some of the theories in biology that an alien would look like. It, uh, you, you've been doing um, a lot of research in this glow-in-the-dark gelfish gene. So w- what have you discovered? Well, if you, if you take the gene uh, coding from a jellyfish that makes them glow-in-the-dark and you put it in a Petri dish with E. coli, the E. coli take up the jellyfish gene automatically. 
and they start glowing in the dark. And so if, if a meteorite lands on the Earth and there's an E. coli sitting there, which there probably is, the E. coli was, is going to take up the genes of the meteorite, and so that's how easy it is. Uh, Chris Bertram joining us. The website, again, is chrisbertram.com, B-E-R-T-R-A-M. I mean, this is just it's the kind of stuff that's just fascinating, fascinating to me and to most people. The book is Code of Prometheus. Yeah. It's, uh, it's published by Create Space. Chris, the author of many books, you can go to his website. You can see them all and get them. Uh, what, uh, what do you think uh, will be the ultimate result of the Mars meteorite that you have, which is amazing, and the testing? Uh, how long before you think you'll have some specific information to provide, and do you think you'll uncover something that other people haven't? Well, uh, some of the first tests are to prove that it is from Mars, so that's the uh, isotope analysis. And it, I couldn't find a lab that's willing to stick their neck out in the U.S. I had to find a lab in England. So there's still an opposition of disbelief or uh, inertia to get the theory going to even test it. And uh, that's what I'm going through now is to convince a laboratory that um, they should test the meteorites. All right, for people who are listening and saying, well, maybe this guy's a little bit off the wall, I want you to dispute that by virtue of the research you, you've done and where you've gotten your information and quotations and some sources so that, uh, you know, there are, there's always a small segment that thinks everyone is a quack, and I certainly don't on the basis of your resume and the work you've done at Berkeley. But uh, what, what do you do to substantiate the validity of this? So the first reference I found was in Science, Volume 2, uh, number 50. It's June 11, 1881. And there's a doctor describing a display of meteorites with fossils in them. And they couldn't place them to any known species at the time. And so when I found that reference, I just kept digging and digging and digging, and I found more and more. And uh, the results all the way go up to the, the rovers that are going on Mars. They keep finding organic molecules on Mars, water on Mars, clay. And um, so I think that if we look and we're willing to have an open mind, we can put the pieces together and find out, you know, the big picture. Are we gaining uh, momentum in understanding how biology is, is constructed and the origins of life? I think that everyone is in the scientific field. Um, it really is, and it's helping medicine. It, it leads to immunology. It leads to bacteriology when we do this type of basic research. And, uh, we, and so if we improve our understanding of immunology, for example, it'll lead to maybe we won't need vaccines anymore. Maybe we can just go right after the target uh, bacteria organism, or maybe we can improve the vaccine. You know, there's no way to know exactly how beneficial this research can be. Uh, do we get time, Chris, for a quick closing comment on the code of Prometheus? Could you give us a, give us a final summary? So it's written in a dissertation form. Um, it does contain these nice pictures uh, and uh, the theory. And it, I have a formal hypothesis if anyone is interested. Or you could just read it like a comic book, and it's kind of fun to read. All right. Once again, uh, the book, uh, getting a lot of acclaim, is called Code of Prometheus. It's published through Create Space. You all know where to get it, paperback and ebook. And uh, how many other books have you written? I've written one on neural networks, and I'm compiling one now called DNA of the Gods. It's the sequel to Code of Prometheus. All right. And, and they can, uh, people can get all this information by going to chrisbertram.com, right? That's kind of the yeah. place to start? Yeah. All right. I want to thank you uh, very much for joining us. Um, unless you have a quick uh, closing comment, do you have one? Um, uh, just thanks for inviting me. It's just a fascinating topic. I'm excited about the Pluto mission. You know, this is exciting. All right.
Right. Again, thank you. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, Code of Prometheus, hope to have you back on and, um, and talk about this in more detail, especially at a point where you come up with some further information based upon your research. This is Stu Taylor. We'll break and come back and talk about a, just an atrocious deal, even for a layman like myself to see and most people who deal with Iran and why it could spell gloom and doom for everyone. All in the interest of, uh, well, let's take it after a break.